thing that I thought of about uh, a couple of years ago, having uh, sat through one or two fairly disastrous sessions. Um, I'd better introduce myself. I, I assume you have all read the instructions that's been produced by the EAA on how to give lectures. Uh, the answer is usually no, <laughs> and uh, which upsets me because I was the main author of that, though a lot of other people contributed to it. But it's really uh, after problems that we had early on uh, in our uh, conferences where uh, people were standing up giving lectures in any language and half the audience walking out because they couldn't understand. We had to do something about, uh, to decide quite how to uh, uh, quite how to start communicating with one another. And this session is really to look at where we've got now and how we can move on and uh, start providing more help and, uh, and ideas uh, to uh, in, uh, increase the quality. So I, I have got two extremely experienced uh, lecturers who I'm sure are going to give absolutely wonderful lectures which will be, uh, well, well, we'll see what happens. But at any rate, uh, that is the, back, the, the background to, uh, uh, to this session. And uh, I thought I would start off with uh, a sort of a nice quote really to be thinking about. Um, famous first lines of English novels and uh, the uh, most famous one for archaeologists is from the go-between, the past is a foreign country. I mean, just everybody says it. But I want to introduce a new one from a romantic uh, novel from the 19th century, which uh, sadly has not been turned into a television series or anything, but uh, uh, R, uh, by R.D. Blackmore. And he simply starts off, if anyone would hear a simple tale simply told, then he goes on, I, John, read of the, of the parish of Orr, and he goes and starts going a bit into, into dialect. But at any rate, uh, I think that is really the message I want to uh, get across. Keep it simple, keep it bold, and uh, you'll understand it better yourself, and hopefully your audience will uh, as well. So our problem, we literally, as I said, started with the Tower of Babel, and there really a lot of mutual incomprehension going on, uh, and different uh, uh, ideas uh, of, uh, uh, of seniority and things like that. How long people were allowed to lecture uh, depended on their uh, status, uh, rather than uh, what they had to say. Great question then, which language should we use? Um, for a while it was any language, then it went, people were suggesting it should only be English. And then uh, uh, my own particular uh, idea, uh, having heard an Italian lecture to a, a very mixed audience, uh, and to give a lecture which everybody understood, even though he was uh, doing Italian, it can be done. It doesn't have to be uh, in English. It just has to be comprehensible uh, to the audience, and that is really the, uh, the message one needs to get across. So we have a varied audience. We have people who speak and understand English uh, fluently, uh, people who understand some English but want to check that they really did understand, and people who perhaps uh, speak little or no English, and we don't want to discourage people like that from coming uh, to the EAA. So what we're all doing is really a combination of the spoken and written word, although somebody reminded me uh, yesterday uh, that there's also the hands, which uh, <laughs> are another uh, form of, uh, of lecturing. But the people we forget. Uh, when I did my original thing, somebody came in and said, what about dyslexics? There are certain uh, forms of lettering which uh, they can't read. and. Uh, and I appreciate this more at the moment because poor vision, I'm, I just look at this, it's a blur. Uh, I'm waiting for a cataract operation, uh, which hopefully I'll be able to start seeing uh, again. And, um, uh, but I'm also getting old and losing my hearing as well. So I'm one of the people who's beginning to suffer from people who are not really following, uh, uh, following the rules. And of course, we are many nations, at least we hope we are many nations, and uh, we uh, all have different backgrounds into the sort of English uh, we are speaking. So we've got varied speakers. Uh, I think there are probably very few people who speak proper BBC or Oxford or Queen's English or Standard uh, English. Uh, and most na uh, many native English speakers uh, speak with a, a regional accent. I don't know how many people recognize, but I have a regional accent. Uh, the English pick it up very quickly, 
but uh, a lot of the non-English speakers don't understand uh, that I, I have this slight accent simply because I'm lucky. My accent is fairly close to, uh, to standard English, so on the whole people can understand me well. But it's uh, sometimes a little bit difficult to uh, gently say to Scottish colleagues, perhaps they don't understand Glaswegian particularly well. And so we have to accept that uh, we have problems, whoever we are, uh, of communicating. We have a habit of using colloquial expressions uh, with, and, uh, and speaking too fast and too el uh, elaborately. Um, Non-English speakers, most, of, most of the people have an accent of some sort and sometimes a very strong uh, accent. No problem in that. We English are lucky that everybody comes and speaks our language. And uh, so uh, thank you very much uh, to anyone who is not a native English speaker. Mm -hmm. but, um, the, but even with uh, native English speakers, one of the problems is that uh, most, uh, uh, especially the younger generation, perhaps haven't even learned a foreign language, let alone stand up and give a lecture in, uh, in another language. Um, I belong to the generation where I had to go out and speak other languages, and I remember my first attempt in German, uh, and uh, at the end of it uh, came to question time, and virtually every question started, if I understood you properly. <laughs> and uh, so one learns, one learns. And, uh, and so it's good to be uh, like, uh, to, le uh, to be lecturing in and listening to other languages, it gives you an idea of the problems, but there are, too, as I said, too many people who are not uh, uh, familiar with that. What we've tried to do is uh, to write out the advice to presenters, the people who are chairing sessions, the people who uh, are the speakers, the people who are producing posters, we're not too prescriptive. What, in fact, variety is the spice of life. We don't say, this is the way you have to do it. There are many good ways, but there are also many bad ways. But there are also many ways, uh, very simple problems, uh, that can be uh, sorted out uh, very easily. And uh, so things like uh, proper names, the names of people, the names of sites, um, this is uh, not something that's always uh, um, uh, particularly uh, easy to understand. Uh, I always love them, Shetsky Jerebitz, uh, nobody understands what it is until they see the picture of a ma uh, the head of a man with a big moustache and so on and realize it comes from Bohemia. Um, but uh, I, uh, m my first big excavation was at a place called Rosselbury. Can you spell it? In one of my former students. They're too. I uh, think I can. But, you can, uh, yes. Yeah, but, uh, but even the English people, yeah, either they can spell it and can't pronounce it, or they can pronounce it but they can't spell it. Yeah. Uh, so even within English, we have these uh, these problems, and large numbers as well. Uh, when trying to write down a telephone number in French, I write down all the numbers and then to try and work out what it what it means. Yeah. Uh, so uh, something like you know, 1999 comes out. Uh, and, with mil uh, 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 oh, forgot how to do my French. Catra and D set would be 1997. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good example of how just simply writing on the screen and everybody can uh, immediately understand what it is. Um, but the session organizers uh, should send out the advice to all presenters, uh, uh, all the participants, uh, but many don't. I didn't, did I? But anyway, I knew you two knew the stuff anyway. But it's interesting going to the lectures here, and it's very obvious those who haven't read the instructions, uh, you see the old, same old mistakes just uh, 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 turning up. And, uh, well, very often the worst people are the professors and so on who've been doing these things for years. They, they know how to do it. They don't need advice from people like me. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> they do the worst. Uh, but at any rate, the basic thing is there is no point in attending the session if you don't understand what the speaker is saying or if the speaker is simply failing to communicate uh, with the audience. 
And it was in Istanbul where uh, I attended a session where just like, everything went wrong. Some of it was not the, the speaker's thoughts, the sun uh, coming through the, uh, the blinds so that you couldn't actually see the, some of the slides on the screen and things like that. But I was sitting next to a German lady and one of the organizers got up and uh, started giving his lecture and she switched off in about two minutes and she said afterwards, what did he say? Didn't understand his accent, spoke too fast, nothing on the screen to help me. And uh, so even the organizer was making a mess uh, of it. And I found out afterwards that nobody had seen or circulated the, the advice. The best lectures, the best presented ones were actually done uh, by the youngest people. So at any rate, we're, what we're looking at now is uh, how can we improve things? How can we uh, try and persuade everybody that we were, what, what, what ought to, to do? So the aim of this session is uh, try and decide uh, what we need to do. Um, want to, uh, one thing one has to think about is how different presenting at an international conference is from what we normally do in lectures when we're speaking to people who speak uh, our own language. Um, some of the things we've thought about provide feedback on sessions and presentations. I know I originally brought this up with, with, with Mark many years ago and he said, well, there's some people who don't like being criticized in terms of uh, uh, experience and politics of, uh, of the past uh, when you're coming from a country where uh, there, are, there are problems about what you say. Um, must perhaps find uh, different ways to circulate the information try and send it out to every single member of the EAA and tell them to read it, where we will get through to at least some people. And, uh, and uh, also, perhaps we need to find out what training is actually available for people um, in work, in universities, etc. Can we find out uh, what's going on uh, through our teaching and training committee? Um, and uh, can we give advice to the trainers about what sort of things we need to see? It? And I was just thinking of some of the organizations in, uh, uh, in Britain who uh, might be able to uh, take some of this on. I'm sure there are places in other countries. But the Chartered Institute of Field Archaeologists, I don't know what you're doing at the moment, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, set point taken. Think, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm telling you, if it, if it helps, I mean, we have run courses on presentation, but they happen once. Yes. Or twice. Yes. It's not a permanent thing. Yeah. But it, 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 and we haven't used archaeologists. Yes. To do yes. Teaching. Yes. We've used people who do yeah. presentation skills. So uh, we hope after this session there will be yeah, something which we, we which as archaeologists will be able to uh, yeah. present. Um, and uh, well, our higher education our, uh, academy, our universities again, they tend to be taught by people who are not archaeologists, and we have specific ways and specific problems. And, uh, and we also just hope that everybody, anyone who's organizing a conference anywhere, will just steal our, our, our ideas. Uh, they're there, they're on the web, copy them, use them, adapt them. Uh, they're there for everybody to, uh, to use. And so, as I said, we're looking at the possibility of doing pre uh, preparing uh, training videos and uh, hopefully this will turn into a session which we will be able to use. Well, that's me finished, uh, probably not long time, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, yes, Mark, uh, come and give us a brilliant lecture, as you always do. <laughs> and, uh